That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Bull, the fifth film directed by Paul Andrew Williams, which premiered at the Fantasia International Film Festival in 2021. It also played at the BFI London Film Festival. It is being released April 1st, 2022, courtesy of Sabin Films. Do we know Paul's other films? Yes. Uh, he's been working in television for the past decade. Uh, so this is kind of uh, his first film since 2012, I think. I'm a fan of his first two films, uh, London to Brighton in 2006, which this film is, the vibe is very similar, uh, and The Cottage in 2008 with Andy Serkis, which is, has a lot of WTF uh, plot twist moments. And I believe you probably watched that with me. What is it called again? The Cottage. We probably rented it back the year it came out. What year was that? 2009. Hmm. Uh, I think Paul Andrew Williams... Uh, in about that time period felt like uh, he was on a tr him and Ben Wheatley and Tom Shankland who directed The Children I thought were on a, kind of the same trajectory um, of international acclaim and only kind of Ben Wheatley has be become something of a uh, notable contemporary auteur uh, but anyway I was excited to watch this it also stars uh, in the lead Neil Maskell uh, who started uh, Kill List and many other things and uh what else was I going to say about that? Yeah. The basic story is there is a man named Bull, played by Neil. Oh, not to be confused with Bull starring Rob Morgan and Yolanda Ross. No. From 2019. Okay, there's a man named Bull, played by Neil, and he's in the UK somewhere. And he's part of like some organized crime thing, which reminded me of the guy from... Or that situation in the TV series Ozark. Mm -hmm. Who, the guy from Power. Mm -hmm. Do we know his name? Uh, the actor's name, no. That white guy. Uh, he's in uh, that movie with Megan Not So Good. Uh, the Intruder. That guy, the his, his character in Ozark, his dad. Mm -hmm. That sort of like union worker, crime boss type shit. That's sure. what this is. And Neil's a part of that shit. And the crime boss in this movie? Uh, David Heyman playing Norm. Bull is married to that man's daughter. Gemma. And this lady ain't shit. Yeah. She looks like... <laughs> she ain't shit. He has a daughter with her and we find out that... Or he has a son with her. And we find out that she wants to be like separated from Bull because she's with some other man. and Named Carney. And not only does she want to leave Bull, but she wants to take their son. And what Gemma wants, Gemma gets. Because the dad is, has a... We see a confrontation with Bull and the dad. And he says, listen, you just need to go on ahead and let her go. And she's taking the boy. And Bull's like, no, she's not. So we see them sort of like... By, you know, by force remove him so that the daughter can run away with the son. And then they kill Bull. Or so they think. So the bulk of the film is like a revenge movie because we flash forward 10 years and we see that Bull is back in town. And his MO is to find his son and kill everyone who was involved in this shit in the first place. Yes, he swore he would. And he does. He kills everyone. Mm -hmm. And the final person he kills is his ex-lady. And he's like, where is my son? And we find out not only did, not only is she no longer with the man she left him for, but she gave up their child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he goes and finds the child and the gag is Bull is dead. This entire movie of him killing all these people, that's him being like reincarnated from the dead. So whether he's like a zombie or a demon, I don't know. But the, yeah, this entire time he's come back killing people, he's actually like the living dead. The end. Well, he drops his kid off in a church with a wad of money uh, who's passed out because he's messed up on whatever substances he's taken to, you know, hopefully live a better life. I did like this movie. I think it, it's very familiar. It feels like any Liam Neeson movie, except much more elevated, much more... Um, like, I don't know what the word, art house, maybe. But I think it's very violent and very, it kind of has a very gritty feel. There are some really uh, sort of uh, eccentric uh, features in it that mm -hmm. I thought were really fun and set it apart from. That, that creates a sense of unease. Like there's this barbecue flashback where 
there's all this slow motion. I think the score is really good. It was scored by Rafferty, who is the composer on uh, the series I May Destroy You. Um, I, I did really like the vibe. I think Neil Maskell is, you know, very unsettling. I liked him a lot. I think the acting from everyone was great. Uh, David Heyman is a great. He's a, a notable character actor who has, uh, he directed a trio of films in the 1990s, uh, none of which I'd seen until last night. I um, made a point to watch The Hawk, starring Helen Mirren, uh, oh. which uh, is loosely inspired by the Yorkshire Ripper. Uh, that that was an interesting film, which is available on streaming, especially if you like Helen Mirren. But David Heyman, who's Scottish, I think had a very nice uh, accent to this as well, but it really is Neil Maskell's film. Uh, I, I really liked the finale when you realize for sure that they, they killed him. And Norm, David Heyman's character, keeps saying, he's not, Bull is dead. He's like, somebody is doing this in his name. Cause, and he even goes to Bull's mother and tortures her in another kind of tense, tense scene. scene. But, but he is so sure that it's not him, because come to find, he was burned, shot, and buried. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the opening of the film. So the, the, the film lost a lot of steam for me when we realized that, because we don't know how he was killed. We're assuming that maybe he was shot and left for dead and then clearly didn't die, went into hiding, and then came back. Because that's the only scenario that would make sense. But then, at like the two-thirds point, we realized that no, he was sort of like taken, burned alive, and then while he's fully engulfed in flames for a long time, they shoot his ass multiple times. So at that point, it's like, well, wait, how, how did he survive that? And at the bare minimum, not be covered in like severe burn right. scars. So I think when... I was so derailed by that that I sort of lost a little interest. That, that didn't interfere with my suspension of disbelief uh, it, because I thought, well, they're probably going to explain that somehow. Because right. where, where did he, where was he hiding out? Why a decade? Uh, and it doesn't really answer the question about why 10 years either, but it, it's fine. Uh, because until then, until then, you it's... Well enough, it's done well enough where you're like, oh, this is like all of those films where somebody comes back. Again, like Liam Neeson as a reference, or those Richard Stark, Donald Westlake novels um, that were turned into film, like Parker, uh, Point Blank, or Payback, where somebody comes back to, you know, destroy the outfit that ruined them and left for dead, or Kill Bill even. It, like, the, those tropes are very familiar. Uh, and I, I think it's really that the last few minutes which causes you to... Um, re-examine all of those moments. Uh, until then, though, there's some very nice choice sequences, including, it's not called a tilt-a-whirl in this, but there there are two sequences a, a decade apart that are meaningful. In a carnival, it's, or it's, in a, what do you call that? Like a fun land, a carnival. Is that a carnival? Yeah. Oh. Uh, where he kills somebody on this tilt-a-whirl type thing. That's pretty good. Also, Neil likes to kill people by um, like chopping off body parts. There's lots of hacking. There's a lot of uh, hacking in this movie. He's very good at it, though. He it, is. He saws off an arm uh, at one point and cauterizes it on the stove. Uh, Do you have anything else? Uh, I don't think so. I was going to mention, because I talked about it on the podcast, this is an example of a film where the screener doesn't have subtitles. And I had a very difficult time understanding the dialogue. With their accents. Uh, yeah. But in general, I feel like films need to have subtitles. But I, th I find that as you watch uh, people with certain accents, your, your ear starts to catch up with um, how they speak. At least sure. for me a little bit. But yeah, subtitles obviously would have helped quite a bit. What would you give this movie? Uh, I would give it uh, three and a half out of five. I would give it three out of five. Anything else? No. Bye.